You're my friend. You are my brother, even though you are. Our service today is on Trinity Sunday and the subject is Oh What a Mystery. And you'd never think I had gone through this PowerPoint this morning. It's becoming a bit of a mystery to me, I don't know why. Uh, my mind drifted off listening to that lovely hymn at the beginning. Uh, sat in the front row of my son's wedding and I loved the song and I sang a wee through the style to him. We all played in an old organ and I was about two feet from the microphone and anyone that knows me well knows that that's not a good idea having real near a microphone. So that part of the wedding video is that this terrible dirge going on and uh, that's me. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Stand if you're able please as we sing our first hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
you from God our Heavenly Father, peace from His Son Jesus Christ, who is our peace, and peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. And the peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Please offer one another a sign of peace. Made ourselves right with one another, let's make ourselves right with God, as we say sorry to God. And in doing so, we consider those things that we have been struggling with. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us there put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Do so by saying together, Holy, 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 As we gather, let us profess together the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made all things? I believe, I believe and trust, trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ who redeemed the world? I believe and trust, trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe, I believe and, trust and trust in him. him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. We, we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And our prayer for today. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth, and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now we come to our readings. Philip's going to deliver both readings today. And in between the readings, there's a little bit of a response. Thank you. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6, reading verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with, with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And Philip's also going to deliver our gospel reading after we say together, Alleluia! Alleluia! Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. One more God, who was, and is, and, and is, and is, is to come, the Almighty. Hear the gospel of our Lord, according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do, apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. <laughs> the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not believe our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <coughs> May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be always pleasing to you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So here we are at Trinity Sunday, and to be fair, it is all mystery, one that I believe we will never really understand until the hereafter, but hey, how does that ever stop me preaching, or any other preacher for that matter, who are called to unfold something of the mysteries of God to those who are listening. Of course, our readings make no direct reference to the Trinity, naturally, because it is a church construct. Now, don't panic. I'm not saying that I do not believe that God doesn't exist as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That's a given. But the term Trinity was a way the church came to define the mystery of God. The mystery of a God who was distinct in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and yet one. And to be fair, it took several centuries for them to do this. And like everything in the church, it was not without argument, disavowed ideas and schisms. However, I think the readings set for today do perform a wonderful dance as they intermingle references to Father, Son and Spirit. And in many ways, I think it probably would have been easier to focus on the idea of Trinity, however difficult it is than to continue in what is my current tradition of speaking about the Gospel. 
because I think we have yet another challenging passage from Joel. I want to, at this point, thank specifically the small but faithful colleagues who join me for Bible Reflection on a Tuesday evening, where we wrestle with the following week's Gospel. It was really good this week, and, you know, anybody is welcome to join us. Um, you just need to be willing to engage with the passage as it speaks to you. Very good. There we are. See, Lynn joins us. We have great fun, don't we? It's yes, very we do. good. Yes, so I, I would encourage anybody else. It's only half an hour on a Tuesday evening. Um, However, I also have included today in the readings that rather strange passage from Isaiah, uh, mainly so that I could have mentioned the Wednesday Bible Study group, who are currently grappling with Revelation. We are currently working through that wonderfully strange vision. But much of that strange vision in Revelation comes and draws from images of the Old Testament just like the one we had in Isaiah. A foretelling of a powerful one who will come to forgive sins and the God who sits on the throne. And don't worry if you think you've missed that Bible study because we are going to do the same again at Coletta over the next few months looking as we delve into Revelation. Oh, and so I do think, thank Lynn for allowing that to happen. But back to, see, advertisement over, back to today's <laughs> Gospel. Which of course contains those most wonderful words at the end, or towards the end. John 3.16, it's probably the first passage that anybody ever gets to recite off by heart, I think, in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. The trouble with the passage before us is I often want to leave out John 3.16, not because I don't like it, I love it, but because it's exactly that, it is so comfortable and so familiar that sometimes we can just focus on those words and remember nothing else that happened before. So let me unpack some of that. It was important to John and therefore it should be important to us. So as always, a little bit of context. Having spent some weeks focusing on readings from John's Gospel towards the end of Jesus' life, today our lectionary planners whisk us right back to the beginning. John, in his retelling of the life of Jesus, has just told us about Jesus' first miracle, the sign of new beginnings where he turned water into wine at that wedding at Cana in Galilee. Jesus has also had a bit of R&R &R time in Capernaum with his family and friends. We all need a bit of R&R. &R. And then travelled to Pentecost, to Jerusalem for Pentecost, where he's done a bit of cleaning in the temple by throwing out the money changers and those who sold animals for sacrifices. He has then predicted his own death. And Jesus mentions this really as an aside, that people saw many miraculous signs that he was doing and came to believe in him. And now he retells the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, that high-ranking Pharisee who comes to Jesus at night in the dark. This darkness that John mentions is not just about him coming at night, but it is also talking about Nicodemus' own spiritual darkness. For John is continuing with his theme of light and dark that he introduced in his prologue. Those who live without the knowledge of Christ are in the dark. And those who follow Christ are in the light. They are part of the light. Nicodemus declares that he knows Jesus has come from God and that God is with him because of all the wondrous signs he is doing. Nobody can do these things if God is not with them. But he does not understand Jesus' response about being born of the Spirit. For Nicodemus is in spiritual darkness. We can, of course, think that the Spirit of God is a New Testament idea, but there are pre plenty of references to the Spirit, the Ruach, in the Old Testament. It is often used in connection with God and it carries ideas of power and strength. 
of breath and wind. And it is understood to be the creative power of God. So Jesus' reply is not only signposting forward to a time when God's Spirit will be outpoured on all people at that wonderful Pentecost. But he's also highlighting that although Nicodemus is a teacher and a leader, he does not understand these things. The things that Jesus is speaking about, in his view, should be clear to anyone who is teaching about God, who has the Spirit of God with them. Jesus rebukes Nicodemus, first calling into question the fact he is a teacher, and then challenging him about how any rabbis can possibly teach of heavenly things, since none of them has ascended into heaven. But Jesus is reasserting his authority to speak about things because only he has this knowledge. The teachers of Israel cannot and will not understand. But Jesus can testify, which is a very important word because it means he has knowledge of this. And of course he does because it is where he has come from. I don't know about you, but that bit about Jesus and the snake, I don't know how you feel. It's a bit odd, isn't it? You know, Jesus on one side and we're going to refer him to a snake. But of course this is drawn from the Old Testament in Numbers. From a time when the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness and once again had erred and strayed like the lost sheep they were from the path of God. And God had cursed them with snakes that will come into their camp and bite them, poisonous snakes. Of course, the Israelites once again repented, and God then said to Moses, If you put onto a staff a bronze snake, and those who are bitten, who will look upon it, and they will be healed. As repentance for sins, Moses saves them. And in Jesus saying the same, he knows the story. He knows that in times to come, he will be lifted up high upon that cross so that we can repent of our sins through him. He will not just be a cure for sins in the here and now, but a cure for sins so that all may live eternally in the presence of God. I think about all of that passage, I think that is a wow moment. Jesus is lifted high so that we may live eternally with God. And then, of course, we get to those wonderful words, for God so loved the world. These words almost overpower the whole reading, but they have been words of comfort for millennia and offer peace and hope to all. For God so loved the world, whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In the end, however, we struggle with the mystery of the Trinity, and it is a mystery. It is something that is difficult or almost impossible to understand or explain. However, we struggle with it. We have hope of eternal life because God loves each and every one of us so much. That final verse for me says that God loves his creation. He loves you and me and everything that he made. That through his power, his spirit, this Ruach, he sent Jesus so that we can all be part of the eternal. Isn't that wonderful? So my prayer for all of us this Trinity Sunday is that by that power of the spirit and through faith in the Son, we may know the Father and know something of the mystery, which is God. Amen. 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 And we've got to our next hymn, Meekness and Majesty. Stand this <laughs> Thank you.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you now with our prayers for your world, your world which you love so much that you sent us Jesus. Creator God, we look around the beautiful and bountiful world that you have created, giving thanks for the good gifts that you have given to us. We thank you that St. James is, has received his Eco Church Bronze Award. Remind each of us that the role we have in caring for your creation every day in the decisions we make. Help us to make good decisions rather than simply taking the easiest route with little care for its impact. We pray that you would change the hearts of those who seek to destroy the beauty of the earth for their own gain. And with this in mind, we remember particularly the open cast mining bid in Fuerteventura and the devastating environmental and health impacts of oil refineries in Nigeria. Encourage those who seek climate justice and those who work to restore our land, the rivers and the seas. Creator God, help us work together to heal your earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, your rule extends to the ends of the earth universe. 
and by your will, kings and presidents rise and fall. We pray for all those countries who are facing elections, and we particularly pray for the UK and the United States of America. We pray that those who are elected will be men and women whose intentions are godly and at one with your will for your people. We pray that their priorities will align with yours, Father, so that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the sick, we think of all those who are struggling with poor physical or mental health. And in the silence, we name them before you now. alongside them that they may know your healing love. We pray for all those who work in healthcare. Grant them strength and wisdom for every challenge that they face. And be with those who walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Walk with them, comfort them and bring them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we look around our world and we see war and destruction. So we bring before you now the places and the situations on our hearts. Bring peace to every situation that we know of that knows the torment and the uncertainty that war brings. Protect those who are fleeing from violence and conflict. Grant them safe passage and help them to find welcome and acceptance wherever they find a home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we pray for the churches here nationally and all around the world. Let them be a light in the darkness and beacons of hope in situations that may seem hopeless. As we give thanks for those who have nurtured us, help us to sow seeds of faith in others. Help us to reach out to those in our communities who have yet to know you for themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Living God, you know our every thought. So we bring before you now the situations that are known to us and the people that we love most. Be with us as we journey together through the highs and the lows. Grant us wisdom to speak into the situations that need to hear our voice and be with us in the silence when words fail us. We pray for all these things in your holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
I'd ask you to stand again if you're able, and we're going to sing I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all whom the Spirit works to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying Dying is Lord is Lord 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 Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, <coughs> through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. No, we are very no, we, we are one because, because we are shared in the Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come and share in this simplest of meals, this finest of feasts, for this is the table of the Lord and not the church, and he welcomes all who wish to meet him here. We come from different places and traditions, and as such, bread and wine is available to all. Wine in the form of a common cup or as an individual portion. But please come and share, for the Lord welcomes you here.
and so we say together. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, it's lovely to welcome you to worship here. There is a visitor's book at the back and we would be delighted if you could sign it. Uh, we love looking back to see where people have joined us from across Europe and the world uh, with worship here over the years. There will be uh, refreshments and chat outside. Please do stay. It's lovely to hear your stories. I do believe there's cake. Yes. My favourite charity, there was one um, uh, near Exeter Cathedral. Lemon Drizzle. Uh, Lemon Drizzle. Uh, <laughs> words from her. Um, there was a, a charity near Exeter Cathedral um, uh, where we came from West Country. And um, their slogan was Where there's cake, there's hope. <laughs> and we always have cake. <laughs> a charity after my own heart. I invite you to stand as we come and sing our final hymn today. Unbroken praise be yours. Stand <coughs>
Um, just in case any of you were thinking to head to El Catillo next Sunday, the restaurant is closed for the next two weeks. Uh, so um, we will be gathering here as a combined community for our worship. So worship is only at 5 p.m. here for the next two weeks. Starting soon, um, Christianity Explored. I will start on the 4th of June, 12 to 1 at Castle Hall. Anybody interested, please, um, yeah, come along. Uh, 4th of June, I will keep telling you about it. Um, just in case you didn't see the notice at the beginning. We are not currently live streaming. Um, we are trying to record the service this evening, hopefully it's worked. Um, but we are also in the process of updating the website and so the usual calendar is not available. So please, in the words of Colossians 3, 12, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and an awful lot of patience <laughs> as I struggle to get to grips with it. And so as we stand there, let's pray together for our chaplaincy here. God of the mission, who brings us to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our mind, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our community. We ask this in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.